And I believe we're live. Look at this. It's working. Wonderful to have modern technology. Amy, thank you. And uh, what we're going to do now is to spend some time together. And hopefully I, I do this one right. Uh, what is this thing all about? This, first and foremost, is about having all of you, my friends, uh, joining me for this get-together on Facebook. It's called Facebook Live. But what is the reason for us to do this? For those that follow me, that follow my television series on uh, public television over the past 30 years, you know that I have a passion for cooking. I absolutely adore cooking. But just as much as I love cooking, I adore telling stories. And it's not because I make a big deal out of it, but because every single recipe I've ever done in my life uh, comes uh, uh, with a story attached to it. And in the process of doing this, one of the things that I find is this enormous joy that I have uh, as people uh, not only enjoy the food that I make, but I also they get to love uh, the stories that go along with it. And I think uh, my whole life is uh, a series of stories combined together. Um, why did I write this book? What are the reasons that brought me here? I would like to tell you there was divine intervention where I was told how great things were going to be and how fantastic everything was going to be for me, but uh, that was not the case. Uh, this book pretty much came uh, from uh, a terrible moment that the whole world suffered, and that's the pandemic. And the years that ensued past the pandemic itself at its worst uh, were the years in which many of us, most of us, all of us actually, I should say, found ourselves with a lot of things to think about and reevaluate. Uh, Nancy and I. Nancy, in this case, being my wife, in case I've not made that clear, the title of the book is From My Heart to Your Kitchen. Uh, but for this book to be real, I had to have uh, a co-authorship of my wife. Nancy, as always, refused to have her name mentioned in any of the texts of my previous cookbooks, except in stories, but she's always been there helping me. Uh, and I thought that this is our book, uh, me and her. And I would like for her name to be right next to mine because she gave me great inspiration. Her stories are wonderful. And I think it would be interesting uh, for my fans to look at the cookbook picking up the different ways in which Nancy and I look at life. A life, I think it's almost like a, a, a movie, uh, but that's because it's me talking about myself. And every time I talk about myself, I make tall tales and I tell them all in the most wonderful outcome. Later on, I'll read you one of the stories so you can see and tell exactly what that is. But I don't think that this book would have been so much fun to make if it wasn't for the fact that I did it with her. Uh, the thing that I find most appealing about everything is the way that she sees my talents and even more importantly, the way in which she sees the things that we have done together and how much they've affected us completely and everything that we have done. Um, you say, what are those things? <laughs> One of them is to get along. Uh, Nancy and I have been working together now 24-7, uh, I would say, almost for the past 20 years. How can you stand somebody and not get in a fight with them if you're living with them 24-7 and plus you're also working with? To me, it was the easiest thing ever. I get along with my wife. Uh, she's extremely intelligent. She has great ideas. Uh, she came up with some wonderful concepts within the context of this book. By the way, these are not books that we're making in massive quantities. This is self-publishing uh, 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 adventure. Um, we just designed the book ourselves with the help of uh, a few great designers that we met over the years. Uh, we put together the stories. Most of the photos from the book are from my wife. Uh, and we put them together in a way that people would love to hold it. As a matter of fact, for those of you that don't know, uh, this is the book right here. This is what it will look like. It's a hard book. It's pretty thick, almost 200 pages, and it's loaded. Uh, with stories, it's loaded with recipes, but the one thing that makes it super exciting is, uh, let me show it to you, because if I just talk about it, you will not see it. By the end of this call, I will be the one reading the story, but forget the photograph of this, because I look nothing like this anymore. I had a six-pack in those days. I don't now. Uh, for those of you who have met me at a supermarket shopping, you have noticed that uh, I'm a little chubby. Uh, you see this? This is called a QR code. Uh, now, with your camera or with your iPad uh, or your pad uh, with the Android uh, system, you simply point it out to this and it will pop up an address that leads you to my website where the very story that you're about to read here by yourself is actually narrated by me. And when it comes to the recipes, we have the same thing. Each 
and every one of the recipes in the book comes both with a voiceover narration from me walking you step by step including the ingredients list on everything that you need to do and the other part is uh, the video uh, it's a complete video that we've taken out uh, and we have produced with this thing in mind so that uh, if you say well I love the way Nick is telling me this but can I do it let me show you how to do it and in the video not only we show you step by step on how to do everything but we also show you exactly how to actually plate the dish so that you will bring it to the table and you serve it with a big smile. I think that one of the biggest handicaps that the people at home have is uh, they're not quite trained in how to present something that they made in a beautiful fashion that's also appealing to the eye. And while that will not make your food taste better, uh, it will achieve for you enormous advantages. The most important of which is that all this joy, the smiles that you had while you were cooking now are reflected into the food that you so proudly present to your guests. Let me see what's checked in right now. I just want to make sure that we have uh, a lot of people coming in here. Oh, look at this. Jane, how are you? Vicky, so happy to see you. Matt Green, oh, I, this is, uh, we're doing pretty good here. A lot more than I expected. Actually, it, ciao Yolanda, how are you doing? Vivian, I have not spoken your name in a long while. Liz Weldon, Eric Norman. Oh, mamma mia, mi sto divertendo. Corrado, ciao bello. I have to be attentive also now I speak to you because I noticed that the last time when I talk so loud, you know, my voice gets ruined by the microphone. So let's go back to what we were discussing. The book is a self-publishing uh, adventure. Uh, Nancy and I decided I don't want to have any obligations to sponsors. I don't want to have any obligations to company that want to uh, lease the usage of my image, of my recipes, of my stories. I want this to be mine. I don't want a publisher to tell me how to design the book, how many pages it should be, or what stories I can put in or what I cannot put in. I don't want a publisher to edit my story so that according to the market research, they're more appealing to the public in general. I want my book to be mine. I want my book to have my words. I want my book to have my wife prominently feature on the inside with her own voice, with her own sound, with her own vision. And I think that one of the most touching stories in the context of the book is when uh, my wife wrote about meeting my grandma for the first time. Actually, she met my grandma Dele, the mom of my mom, before, uh, right after she met my mom. So we went to Sicily first, then we went over to see my grandma Dele, and then from there I took her to Switzerland uh, because a large part of my family during the uh, early 60s, uh, under the most difficult uh, economic conditions that Italy met at the time, find themselves to have to immigrate, uh, part of which went to France, most of which went to Switzerland, some of them ended up in Australia, and some of them instead ended up all the way in the United States, Argentina, Brazil, we got them all over the world. Uh, but the sisters, which were uh, Buliti, Titi, Maria, my mom, Massimiliana, and of course Don Adele, Uncle Giovanni, and Uncle Alfredo, this was the unit that stayed together. Uh, how did this all happen? Uh, why is it that uh, a woman that from the north of Italy, in the Venice region, who travels all the way down to Sicily to have children with a crazy Sicilian, my father Vincenzo, trust me, the man was crazy, I adored him. I'm a mini version of him. How did this happen? The book really doesn't say any of that, but what the book does, it gives a lot of stories, including my first uh, white patent leather shoes that I wore that my mom was so proud of, and we took to my grandma's farm where I decided to chase a bunch of chickens around. Uh, even now, when I recount the story, I am laughing like you wouldn't believe. I, I cannot believe how many of you are here. Marcello Alperti, Rose Cadina, how's the coffee business run? This guy is amazing, you gotta check him out, he's awesome. Uh, Vita Veronese, Arlene Levine, oh mamma mia. This is absolutely awesome, I love this. <clears throat> I hope that uh, we are not uh, distraught by something that uh, uh, could be problematic in terms of the sound. We are in the hands of technology. So if that happens, uh, I've asked my people to text me. So if you see me at one point or another doing something like this on my phone, it's because they're trying to alert me to what might go wrong. But let's continue with the story as to what this book is about. I made a huge mistake with this book. Uh, what happened is that uh, when the book first came out, uh, we decided to make a record printing so we could get some of the be best possible uh, prices. And as we got this thing started, what happened instead is that I said, ah, why do I have to go through all that? That's just under a bunch of books, several hundreds and uh, uh, close to a thousand, and then uh, we'll worry along as we sell them. It seemed like a good idea at the time. 
turned out is not such a great idea. What has happened, uh, as a matter of fact, now as I'm speaking to you, is that uh, most of the books <laughs> <laughs> being pre-sold in the last month and a half. I had no idea that they would move at this speed, nor did I expect it, but I'm very happy. So as I'm standing with you right here, I need to let you know that we only have uh, 50 books from the shipment that's going to be delivered to us from the printer around the 20, 25th of August. And those are going to ship out immediately right away. I think that between the first and the second week of September, we will have all the books going out. Uh, but the part that's most important is we'll continue ordering books as we go along. So if you want to have a book right now on your hands and, and deal with it right away, I will propose that you go to my website, nickstellino.com forward slash, and then the word shop, S-H-O-P, and then we'll take you to the page where you can order the book. Uh, if we make it within the shipping, we'll uh, get it delivered to you first uh, or second week in September. If we fall behind instead, You'll have to wait until October, and then those will be the ones that we'll produce for the holiday seasons. Uh, the holiday season, we're always looking for a gift to give to somebody. Uh, what could we do for them? How could we do it? Uh, what would be lovely? What would be unique? And I would like to put my membership in the list that you're all preparing for your family and friends. How about a book that talks back to you? It talks back to you with an Italian accent. Well, that would be me in my voice. Uh, I, I think uh, it's fantastic. I think uh, within the next five years, all books will be done by this. Right now, it's very difficult for most of my associates and uh, competitors to do it because for those that do have a TV show as I had for the past 30 years, find themselves at the employee of a network. And the network, more often than not, uh, owns their name, uh, owns their image, uh, owns all of the recipes that have been printed in previous books and so forth and so on. Uh, to my knowledge, I'm one of the very few people that actually owns every bit of work he's ever done. And because of that uh, organization that I did, out of the fact that uh, I wanted to be beholden to nobody in the early days, and it was a much more expensive of doing things versus leasing them or selling them out, I find myself now in a position in which I have this huge variety, not only of stories that are my own, some of which I've written before, some of which I've written exclusively for this book, but also gives me the ability to interact at the top of the te technology available today. Uh, in presenting a book that actually is in a printed form, and you can see here the solid prototype, this is the author copy, look how nice and thick it is. And there's something beautiful, I think, about holding a book in your hands. I find myself many times uh, going through my pad up and down on my phone. It's not the same thing as when you hold something and you're reading it. When you put your glasses on and you can feel the word, you know, word by word, the comma, the point, and the story flows and suddenly your eyes go in and you imagine everything that's before you. That's what this book is doing, and, and it was engineered that way. And also, I wanted to create something that keeps you company. Think of this not so much as a book, but almost as if it was an evening at the theater, and each story is a new play. Uh, you can read the story if you want to, and they're fun. I don't make them too long. There's a couple of them that are very long, and I'm very attached to them. But most of my stories are fairly short, and they get right to the point, and they make you feel how I felt at the very moment. I plan to read you one before I go. But many people say, Nick, I look at you, I look at your book, I think I would like it, but how do I know if I'm going to like it or not? And for that, for that, we have created a sample. As a matter of fact, I would like to encourage you all, uh, if you have the opportunity, uh, to pick up uh, my sample on my website. All you need to go uh, is Nick Stellino, N-I-C-K-S-T-E-L-L-I-N-O.com. And once you get to my home page, uh, if you have not been there before, there will be a pop-up window. So if you have a pop-up blocker just for this visit, you know, uh, disable it. The pop-up window will simply take your email address and we will send you a link to 39 pages of my book that we have turned into a flip book that you can check out uh, on your own at any time you want to. Plus, the thing that we have done, instead of having the book download on your phone or your pad, with all the media that's connected, it would choke up the system that you have. The book lives on my website, meaning that you now have a link that gives you direct access with all the animations, all of the videos, all of the sound, the music that will be transmitted, transported directly into your telephone, into your pad, into your computer, but it's off of the servers or a website, therefore keeping your phone and your pad lean and operational at all times. Uh, in the old days, we used to do this with a PDF, but what we discovered is that the PDF 
PDF gets lost, people don't know how to find it again. This way, it's at your disposal at all time, and all that you need to worry is about the link. But what the link will do, it will give you a feeling of how the book reads, uh, what my voiceovers are like, uh, what are the recipes in there? And how good are these recipes? Could you use them for yourself? Could you not? Are they too esoteric? Are they too difficult? For those of you that follow me for all these uh, 30 years, you know that I don't believe in difficult. I'm of the opinion that uh, things have to be made with ingredients that you can find at your local supermarket. Techniques as simple as one, two, three, and it has to taste great the first time you try it. Uh, people say, really? I say, yes. I mean, for those of you that don't know it, I'm kind of crazy a little bit, especially when I work on a book, I take a recipe and I make it 10 times, even after I finalize it, and each of the 10 times has to come exactly at the first time that I've done it. My idea is that if you're going to teach somebody how to do it, if you're going to show somebody how to do it, if you're going to tell somebody how to do it, you've got to do it in a way in which they can. And the greatest thing that I think this book has is I don't treat you as those who should be looking up at me. The only difference between me and you is that I got a TV show, and at the moment, you don't. That's it. We all have the same things. I got the same problems you got. <laughs> I have a family on my own. I have a wife. And in spite of the fact that I adore her, trust me, living at the Stellinos, it's like uh, living in uh, one of the greatest play of Broadway that's ever seen. I enjoy my life at home. I enjoy cooking for her. I enjoy the time that we spend together, the garden that she has given me, which is fantastic. And here it goes to some of the moments within the context of the book where let me see if I can do this right. I'm going to take away some of these notes that I kept. Look, this is a pork chop recipe. You can see the photograph. And I wanted to design them so uh, there's a, a whole way of looking at how a, a, a book photograph or a, a food photograph should be done. Most of the people like to compose them as if they were paintings, you know, from a distance on the table, wrapped with so many other images. I believe in Caravaggio being the king of light when it comes to painting, but I also believe that when you look at food, you've got to feel it. You almost want to bite into it. So uh, I am very much into very close-up shots of the food. In the videos, we do the same thing so you can taste it, you can feel it, you can look at it and say within yourself, man, I'm going to make this for my family tonight, and you will. There's nothing that blocks you. There's not a single ingredient that you cannot find at the supermarket. Look, I'm just going to open up like this without anything. This is a picture of my dad. Uh, for those of you that wonder why I'm so handsome, well, this is the guy that signed me. As you can see, he was quite handsome himself. The mustache only lasted until he met my mom. My mom did not like the mustache. The mustache was gone. <laughs> and he is my father in his maturity. Uh, the, the, one of the things that happened really is that while I was striving uh, tuna tartar, I love this dish, how to show you how to make it, how to cut it, and how to plate it. That's the most important thing. Many people go to the restaurant and they're impressed by the plating. It's nothing that you cannot do at home with your own dishes. And I show you how, step by step, visually. Uh, the thing with my dad was that he was always full of love and passion when he came to food. <laughs> and he made both me and my brother Mario uh, make a huge connection. My brother became a specialist in wine, uh, truly, and I became a specialist in food. I like all sorts of cuisine. I love Italian cuisine because that is what I grew up with. But uh, just because you're Italian, you cannot be ignoring all these wonderful cuisines from all around the world. Thai, Chinese, Japanese, Mexican. Uh, Mexican, I think, is one of the greatest cuisines of all times that is not properly appreciated because people think that Taco Bell is Mexican food. Well, it's not. Uh, it's, uh, it's a Disneyland version of uh, Mexican food, but the, the elegance that there is, really, actually, truly, in most of the South American country, is this wonderful, beautiful, Beautiful cuisine, full of flavors, uh, full of character. You just need for somebody to explain it to you, to kind of walk you through it. Uh, there is a dish that I make uh, uh, in my uh, in my uh, uh, in my book. Oh, somebody sent me. Oh, Susan K. in Colorado C. How are you guys, you rascals? It's always a pleasure to see you. Uh, Annette Maniachi. Annette, you know what your last name means? <laughs> I know you know. I'm pretty sure you're laughing right now. I am sorry, but I, you have no idea what it's like to, to, to be me right now having this wonderful situation being seen. Uh, basically, what's happening to me right now is that I'm seeing all of these names scrolling up and down. They're scrolling up and down so fast that I cannot read them all. Anna Donofrio, I've not seen you in a long time. 
she's a great lady. You guys really have to go and check her page. She is fantastic. She has such a fantastic personality and such a calming spirit. Ciao, Anna. It's an honor to see you again. Johnny Harper. Okay, I should say John, but Johnny came, came out of my... Hey, Ron, my cousin. How are you? I love that guy. Chuck. And then we have Trisha. Barbara Scura, you made it, you made it. You're not late, Barbara, you're fantastic. You can come anytime you want. This is a, a friend space. You come here to be together with your friends. Uh, <laughs> the story that I want to read you uh, is a story that actually took place at the beginning of my, uh, uh, my falling in love with my wife. It became apparent to me that uh, she was a lot more than just a girl that I, I was uh, in love with or that I thought was cute or I thought was beautiful. I remember the first time I touched her hand, I felt a uh, shock to the system and it was just me touching her hand and I couldn't understand what was happening. And I think she felt the same way because uh, for the rest of the evening, we didn't even know that all these friends that were together at this bar that we went to on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles was even part of the uh, equation. I could only see her. And this pretty much lasted uh, for all of our life. In, in this particular story, uh, my wife uh, finally uh, accepted the invitation to come down to Sicily and meet my family. And my invitation was pretty clear and overt. I knew by then that uh, she was somebody extremely special. I've been with enough girls to know that I never felt uh, with anybody what I felt for her. Uh, and uh, I thought it was extremely important that she would meet the family I come from, the people who made me. And even though she didn't speak the language, I spoke perfect English and Italian, and uh, uh, I would love to, uh, for her to see uh, what made me who I am. And when she came to Italy, uh, meeting my mom and dad, that was quite an adventure. My mom had never seen a girl that I was interested in. Uh, I never brought a girl home before. Uh, it was the first time I did that. But the best of them all was my grandma. And there is a story in the book that you should buy just for that alone, in which Nancy describes with her own words what it was like to meet my grandma. Now, mind you, my grandma did not speak any Sicilian. Uh, she did not speak Italian. She only spoke Venetian dialect. Uh, Nancy knew nothing about Venetian dialect. The same thing was for my uncle Giovanni, who at the time lived with my grandma, because my grandma was getting older and we're all worried and we wanted to make sure she would be protected. Uh, we had lunch together that grandma made for us, a fabulous lunch. My wife immediately understood that I was not the only one in the family that could cook. Actually, I was the least skilled of everybody in my family. Uh, and uh, Italians, right after lunch, I excused myself and I went upstairs to catch a nap. It was a long nap. I've been driving for many, many hours to get there. So it was not until about 4 o'clock in the afternoon that I finally uh, stepped down the stairs to meet with the rest of the family, Nancy, my uncle Giovanni, but then Uncle Alfredo had uh, also joined us. And I remember uh, hearing this huge laughter downstairs, and I was spying on it. And I heard my wife, who uh, spoke a little bit of Spanish that she learned in school, speaking with my grandma, and who spoke only Venetian dialect, and the two of them could understand each other. And then my grandma poured this ocean of photographs, in black and white, most of them, of me and my brother Mario since we were babies. And Nancy was looking at this, was looking at that, and she was telling her stories, and she was telling her stories. And I don't understand if they really understood each other, but they were just loving it. By the time I took the last step off the stairs and I started advancing toward the table where they're all sitting down, they looked at me and they started to laugh even harder. What had happened is that I had fallen asleep and I didn't even look at the mirror before I came down. And this side of my hair has taken the shape of the pillow and I had this Mohican cut uh, of my hair all stuck up in the air and it was uh, uh, quite a funny appearance to look at. But what was great for me <laughs> is to uh, notice that the two things that I love the most in my life were right there in front of me, uh, together, uh, laughing and pointing at me. These are moments of snippets of joy that <clears throat> have given me great force uh, and, and, and great consolation, uh, especially during the dark moments of my life. So we'll talk about that too. Ciao, Lori. JB Well, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Ruben Loboda, Chuck Shui, this is great. Senor Carpenter, how are you? Such an honor to have you with me. And by the way, 
I don't expect you all to be here, but you have to see it from my point of view. What an honor it is to understand that on a Wednesday like today, at this time of the day, so many of you are, are, are taking the time off from whatever you're doing at work or taking care of your kids or some moments of your own vacation just so to listen to me. I hope that I'm making this worthwhile for you. Hey, Louis Cons, how you doing? Rosemary Gilroy, love the name. Diana Paccanini Fimiano. I wonder when is the last time that you heard somebody pronounce your name so well. Melinda Woods, Yolanda Carly. You guys are awesome. I, I thank you. I really want to say thank you for everything that you're doing. Uh, when I wrote the book, I had nothing in mind. Um, and I was having drinks with friends of mine. I said, yeah, why don't you sell a book, sell a million copies, get yourself a private plane, go around the world. I'm not so sure I like to do that. No, I, even a million copies. I feel that this is a book that almost deserves a presence in the hands of friends only. Uh, people who know who I am, what I do, why I do it, how come, why. And a book that I feel comfortable to share some of the most personal inner feelings that I have about life, about the way I felt at certain moments. and. Uh, and also I made a specific selection for the stories and I only wanted to have stories that make you smile, that make you feel good inside. The truth is, we all got bad stories about bad things that happen to us. Recount them again just to make someone else feel bad. What's the point? And then I thought to myself, what, am I going to buy a book just to listen to somebody crying about? I want to buy a book to believe that life is beautiful. I want to buy a book and, and listen to the way in which I can make my risotto a la milanese better than what I've ever done before. I, I want to buy a book. I want to hold it in my hand and for a moment I want to be transported in another place where everything is perfect. An ocean that's always full of fishes. A city when the streets are paved with gold and money means nothing and it's just pure joy everywhere. Impossible. I know. But I came pretty close with it. I chose only the most important stories from the best possible side of life because for any great story there is something of pain or a difficult thing that happened before and it's how we react in spite of the difficulties that we encounter on a daily basis that we find within ourselves a strength that we did not know we had. Is my book going to teach you on how to become better? Is my book going to give you the strength that you didn't know? I don't think so. There's nothing magic about my book that's going to change your life. But what you will find in my book is the ability to stop time. As you read the words one by one, you will be unexpectedly flown into a moment that you will see as clearly as the pictures that you see at the movie theaters. But you will feel the aroma of what's surrounding me. You will feel the sound, the waves crashing from the Mediterranean Ocean. Uh, you will see the smile of my mother. You will get to meet my brother when he was little and I used to chase him around the house. I wanted to make these things so vivid, not only through my voiceover, being the only book that actually talks back to you, but also through the fact that for this book to be successful, it was not about me being better than you. If you start thinking that way, I don't want to play with you. Uh, this book is about us being the same. <laughs> the only thing that's different, we got a different accent. But we had the same love for our family. We had the same instincts about the way we prepare the food, the joy that we want to share with our friends. And I said to myself, after all these things that we have all, as a community, suffer together, and you have just as much as I have, and some of you are far more difficult than I did, how about for once, <laughs> for once of a moment, where you can just have your favorite drink, uh, be whatever that is, sit on your favorite chair, and hold a printed book in your hand that you've been waiting for so long and go page by page reading the stories and reading the recipes that you'll be making for your family and thinking in your mind how fantastic that would be. There is nothing in my book that's ever going to keep you away from living your life. There is nothing in my book that's a warning of a horrible future ahead. There is nothing in my book that talks about the indignities of the human condition. And I don't need to. We see that in the news every day. But you know, there's another world outside the news. It's a world that's hidden in the smile of your children. It's a world that's hidden on the first bite that you take. <laughs> the first bite of pasta is the most beautiful. Uh, or even if it's something as simple as a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. If it's mom, the one who made it, that is the best peanut butter and sandwich you'll ever have. And that's how this book is. Um, 
So before I start reading the story, uh, let me give you a little bit of a presentation. Also, let me say hi to some people. Hi, Kerry Wade, how are you? Mike Berry, how are you? Robert Reed, Susan Holman. Oh, mamma mia. Michele Tassone, oh, Michel Tassone, bellissimo nome, bellissimo nome. Lori Morris, Susan Cooperstein. Uh, it's, uh, I, I don't know you personally, but I feel like I know you because so many of your comments on your, my social media and so many sweet things that you said, you know, I really try very hard to answer to everybody. Uh, and it's not that I don't want to, but there's so many of you out there. I had no idea that I have a niche that's so wide that people like to spend time together. And for that, I am most thankful. So let's go back here to the book. Let's take a look at what it is. Oh, by the way, before I go on, you should get this book just for this recipe right here. What page is it on? Oh, page 23. Fantastic. Go to my site, nickstelino.com. Get the link for my sample book. Once you arrive at the site, the opening page, there will be a pop-up window. So if you do have a pop-up blocker, just for the one moment, disable it, just for the page. You will get uh, a pop-up. All you need to do is put uh, your email in there, and we are going to send you a link for you to have access to the flip book, the digital version of this book. And the reason why I think that is important is because it gives you a sense of the book design, how your eyes meet with it, if you like the colors. That's very important to me, by the way. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, and it's got nothing to do with the book, my wife hates traveling with me, especially when we uh, are on business, uh, because every time I get in a hotel room or a hotel suite, uh, one of the things that I do, I always call for the uh, hotel personnel to come up, and I change the... <laughs> and it changed the position of the furniture according to what I think is the feng shui. I remember in the old days when I used to travel a lot, both in New York and Seattle and San Francisco, those are some of the three cities, actually Chicago I spent a lot of time, but in uh, both in, uh, in uh, Seattle, uh, San Francisco, and New York, I had these hotels where I used to stay all the time, my same suite all the time, and uh, even when they renovated the hotel, I bought the furniture and I paid for storage. I said, do me a favor, every time I come in, take out all the old furniture, the new furniture, put back the old furniture, I wanted to feel like I was at home. Amazingly, they actually did that for me. They were the nicest people. Uh, in those days, I used to know the name of just about everybody, the porter, the chefs in the kitchen, the people that checked me at the front. Uh, people say, if you're famous, what do you do there? Famous. Famous is uh, an illusion. Famous is uh, uh, something that you cannot touch, that in my opinion, uh, they tell you that uh, they write movies about, but famous doesn't mean squat. Uh, you cannot be famous just because you look good. You cannot be famous just because uh, you can cook good. You gotta be famous for something more important than that. You gotta be famous for the way in which you treat people, for the way in which you make people feel. Uh, specifically, the fact that you can be a person that passes on encouragement, especially when moments are difficult. If you're just somebody that yells around, screams all the time, I don't care how powerful you are, to me, I don't want you as a friend, and that's that. Let's go back to the book in here as I go to the page. So I was telling you, page 34 is where I'm going, and this story that I'm about to read to you is also part of the sample of the book. So uh, once again, I interrupted myself as I was telling the story, but when you go to uh, my website, nickstellino.com, uh, there will be a pop-up window that meets you. Uh, just put your email in there, and we'll send you the link for you to a free access to the flip book, the digital version of this hard book, so you can experience it before you put your hard-earned money. The book is expensive, and I respect your money. And if you decide to invest your money with me, it's because you find that this is something that you want so much, is something that you adore so much, that you will be able to use it. As far as I'm concerned, this is a book that contains uh, over 13 different uh, theater plays in each one of the stories. Uh, it's a book that, uh, when you're too tired to read it, reads back to you, and it tells you the story, tells you the recipe, shows you the video. It's a book that takes you to a dimension where everything is beautiful. <laughs> and everybody loves pasta. <laughs> I know, but that, really, that's what I did. So, look at this picture. I don't look like this at all. I told it to you before when I showed it to you at the beginning of the, of the story. Now I'm going to read about it. So to put this in, in context, I brought my wife uh, to uh, Sicily. Uh, she has met my mom and dad. 
my dad had just bought a fancy schmancy brand new car, a Lancia 2000, which was awesome. Uh, four seats, it looked like a, a little Rolls Royce. And when I asked him permission to uh, have his car on loan for two weeks because I wanted to take my soon-to-be wife, at the time she was only my girlfriend, all around Sicily and show her the Sicily that I love, my family, a man, uh, my family, my father, a man of extreme generosity. My mom was always pissed off on my dad because every time he went to <laughs> dinners with friends, he would always pick up the check. And my mom says, why? He says, eh, business is good. Let him have fun. Uh, my mom didn't like that too much, but my father, uh, when he came to uh, friends, family, uh, he, uh, he knew no limit, nor with me or with my brother. He treated us both the same. He gave us everything that we needed at the time that we needed the most, but even more importantly than that, he shaped us into the men that we both became today. Uh, it's great at the age of 65 to tell you that I love my brother just like when we were kids. His name is Mario. <laughs> He's a... <laughs> A little past still, but I love cooking and drinking with him, and I cannot wait for him to come to visit me anytime he wants to. So I'm going to read this. I'm going to pop it up here on my Word document. For those of you that don't know, I'm trying to impress you all with the fact uh, that uh, I am not wearing any glasses. The truth is that I do need to wear glasses, so I have now exploded the vision on this so that even without glasses I can read the words. So the title of this book is, sorry, the title of the story is Saying Goodbye to Sicily, and this was written by me. Before you read the story, there are two things you should know about that photograph. It was taken more than 40 years ago. Despite wishful thinking, I look nothing like that today. And two, the photo captures a moment in my life that was quite iconic. Not only did Nancy capture me in deep thought, she eternalized a moment that forever changed my life. Before visiting my parents in Sicily, Nancy and I took a trip to visit Nona, followed by some fantastic jaunts to Florence, Rome, and then to Palermo. Having then stayed with my parents for a week, my dad kindly loaned me his new car so that I could show Nancy more of the beauty of my birthplace. Uh, if you have not been to stunning Sicily, and I highly recommend you do it, the town of Taormina is one of its most enchanted destinations. When we got there, I had a few dollars in my pocket, and I planned on spending it all to show Nancy Taormina. We sent her all around town looking for a hotel to spend the night. There was a lovely and reasonably priced pensione at the bottom of the hill. But then we found a gem of a private villa they had been turned to a cute boutique hotel. We took a look at some of the rooms, a few were the size of closet, and eventually we found one of the hotel's largest suites that took the entire floor with a spacious balcony that treated us to a magnificent view of the sea below. Nancy wanted to rent one of the smaller rooms. I was having none of that. I went downstairs, I placed my money on the desk and asked, how many nights did this buy me? Three, replied the man behind the desk. Done, I say, paying for all three nights. <laughs> he graciously <laughs> slid back to me a few bills I used to pay for the room and said, make sure you eat on the terrace at sunset. Later that evening, Nancy and I took the hotel clerk's advice and had pizza and wine at sunset on an enormous balcony. It was at the very moment while watching the Sicilian sunset that I knew she was my destiny. As if sensing the magnitude of the minute, Nancy grabbed her camera and took the photo of me as I sat by the fireplace contemplating life and what was coming. She might have sensed the significance of the moment, but what Nancy did not know was that in my mind, I was saying goodbye to Sicily. Deep down, I knew my story had just begun on the stunning Mediterranean island, but as I sat on the Tarmina Hotel balcony, I understood that my future was in America. From that minute on, I devoured every step, every mile we traveled throughout Sicily. Like Nancy in her capture of me in a poignant moment, I too eternalized our time together. Only my camera was my soul. I regretted the uh, I never regretted my decisions to come to America and marry Nancy. 
The photograph that inspired the story captured the depth and the importance of that moment. Every so often, when I look at this photo Nancy took of me, I still feel the same emotions of that day. Every fear I had in that poignant moment. Those feelings and fear opened to a pathway for my soul to connect my heart to my mind. Together they brought me to one conclusion. I love this woman. I will follow her wherever she goes. I love you, Nancy. For those of you who have been following me while I was reading the story, you notice that I got the distracted a couple of times. The reason why, I think my cat is at the door and it's meowing like crazy asking to come in. So let me introduce you to Luigi. Luigi, come in, sweetie. I want to introduce you to some of my friends. Ah, I show that you guys have pets at home, but this is my buddy. Luigi the cat, he will not stand still, he never does, but at least I want you to see his face. Luigi, I love you. Okay, go. He loves to get in here, we always spend time together. When I ride, he's always either sleeping or standing still by my feet. Oh, now you want to go out? That's a, that's a conversation every time. I don't know if your cat does the same thing. First he wants to come in, then you let him in, and then he wants to go out again. Now i got to open the door otherwise. Luigi, okay, here's the door. Go ahead. Do what you got to do. All right. I'll see you later. It was nice talking to you. Luigi is a star. He always has to be seen. If he if he's not seen or noticed by the people around him, he gets sad. The way in which I read you the story was me uh, with a, an ear to the door listening to Luigi crying. But I hope that I'm kind of giving you a sense of what it's like to have my stories read back to you on a voiceover by me. Uh, I think the stories are as important as uh, as medicines. Uh, let me say hi to some friends. There are so many of you I want to do it with all, but they, 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 you guys are here about hundreds. Carmen Di Cocco, Diana May, who is this beautiful lady? Rina Maria Bueno Perez. Mamma mia. Ciao, Bella. Muchas felicidades y que tenga una excelente tarde, excelente, genial. I think I understand that. Thank you, Bella. Grazie. Kerry uh, Connor. Luisa Mambro, how are you, bellissima? Carly Moulin, ah, oh, mamma mia, you guys are really doing it for me. Uh, you know, many times uh, I did not sleep uh, at all last night. Uh, you would say, a guy who's been on TV for 30 years by now, I should know what it's like to be with people. Uh, truth is that, uh, <laughs> oh, look at this, Ruth Young, Nancy M, Deborah P, I, all these people, to keep buying my book, thank you. Please tell your friends about it. I, I did not buy any ads. I did not make any promotion. I, um, I, I'm a horrible marketer with this book. I should have print ads everywhere. I should have uh, exchanges on interactive uh, uh, electronic media. Uh, make alliances. Go to this show. Go to that show. I'm doing nothing. Why? I want uh, for this book to find is own in the hands and the hearts of people that need it. I want for this book to connect in a way that people will care for it the same way they care for the children. I would like for this book to become the one thing that's passed from one generation to the next. I would like for this book to be the one that parents teach the children how to cook. I would like for this book to be the one that inspires the children when they grow up to write the story about their parents and recognize all the great things that the parents have done for them. I want this book to teach all these things without teaching anything. I want for this book to teach all these things simply by inspiring the thoughts that bring these things into teaching. Why? Is it going to make me a lot of money? Quite possibly not even a penny. And I don't care. And I don't care because <laughs> when you're in love, you just want for people to see the same things that you see, to feel the same thing that you feel. And this is what this book does. I remember a couple of nights ago, uh, being somewhat sad, you know, just like you, I get great days and bad days. I thought of all these people that I've lost in my family, that are no longer part of my family because they passed to the other side. And how much I miss them. How I would like to pick up the phone and call them. <laughs> and I can't. And I think how much more I wish I would have done some of the things that I was supposed to do earlier. Um, is this book going to prevent for any of this to happen to you? I don't think so. I don't think so because the book is going to do, it's going to make you remember that you have a book just like this in your heart. You have a book just like this and better in your soul. I just want you to smile. 
I just want you for a moment, in the middle of the day, when things are going terrible for you, to pick up my book any way you want to. Be a recipe, be a story, whatever you like. There are so many of this in here. So many. No matter where you open, it's perfect. You look at it and you go, hey, I want to do this. Look at the story, the king of the witcheria. You should read the story just because it speaks of a moment when the I took a visit to Sicily and at the very time in that year and the year antecedent to that year, uh, the government of Sicily had decided to uh, rehabilitate and renew the infrastructure of the oldest market in Sicily, the market of the Vucciria. They made it beautiful, they made it pretty, but it took quite a long time for people to come back to the Vucciria because it no longer looked like the market it used to be. And the story talks all about that, and it talks about what it was for me, the adventure of going to the Vucciria with my father, shopping for fish, shopping for veggies, and all these vendors to whom my father had given nicknames. Uh, that's why maybe I give a nickname to everything. My, my wife once told me, say, oh, Nick, you got a nickname for everything, and plus, you got a story for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I am the mini-me version of my father Vincenzo. By the way, it's not like my brother Mario is any different. He's got his own version, his own stories. That's why I like spending so much time with him. First, because he's my brother and he's known me uh, since the moment he was born. Uh, my mom once told me a, a lovely story. Uh, it was an argument that took place in the family and I took my brother's side. And uh, I don't recall what the issue was wasn't something big, it was something silly. I, we never really had major huge problems. But in this particular case, uh, my mom looked at me and said to me, uh, you always defend your brother. I said, Mama, you have to see it from his point of view, blah, blah, blah. And I went on with my lawyer-like defense of my brother. And my mom said, no, it's not bad. <laughs> she said, uh, you were like this uh, from the moment he was born. And I said, Mom, what are you talking about? He says, well, you know, when your brother was born, for those of you that don't know, my brother was born at home. Uh, uh, the morning when you came to visit, you, you, you jumped uh, in his bed and, and uh, I said to you, look at your brother. And I, I caressed him, I held him, and uh, then I went back to my room. I came back with uh, a Roman helmet. I remember my mom had bought me uh, the, uh, the toy version of uniform of a, uh, a Roman centurion and I had a plastic sword and a plastic shield I had the helmet so imagine this I mean at the time it was two and a half maybe three no more than that I was just starting to uh, watch television you know have complete sentences coming out of my mouth but what she remembers specifically is that I jumped uh, uh, in the bed where my brother was right next to my mom um, the carriage so to speak and uh, I stood uh, one end of it and I held the shield the plastic shield of the centurion on one adjusted my helmet held my sword and I told my mom and dad don't worry you two go to bed I will protect him against the monsters of the night <laughs> my mom could not finish the story even I could not finish the story as I imagined this moment I remember it as if it was yesterday but this is who we are. I, uh, you, you think you're so different than me. You really are not. Uh, your family is exactly a copy of my own. And I think this is what it is that we do have in common. Uh, the greatest things that we have together is we are the same. Uh, Angela Ferris, Deborah Luciana. Um, what was she asking for? Hold on a second. One person is asking for a very complicated question. Oh, uh, Angela is asking me about pasta salad. No, I don't have any recipes for the pasta salad in the book. That I wanted you to know. So if you buy the book for the pasta salad, this is not the book to buy. Uh, Deborah Luciana, ma che bel nome! Lisa Tovar, Carmen Di Cocco, mamma mia, un nome meglio dell'altro. Matt Myers, with a name like this, you should be an actor. Uh, what I think is that they have some me a lot in business, in life, uh, immigrating to America, finding a new reality in a country that was not the country in which I was born, was an insatiable sense of optimism. This book is based on the belief that life is beautiful. <laughs> Even when bad things happen to you, life, the ability to breathe, the ability to love, is beautiful. And many times, I think what overwhelms us, including me, is the fact that in a sad moment, you find yourself 
overtaken by the events around you and you think that everything is wrong, it isn't. Your friends, your family, your thoughts, your idea, your smile, they will save you from damnation and they will make you a better person. It's so much easier to be good than it is to be bad. And in order to be good, you get to do things because you want to, not because you're profiting from them. And do it because it's the right thing to do. And especially when it comes to your family, to your friends, try to do that. It's one way in which I think as a country, we can come back closer to what we once used to be. Uh, the division that we have, it's not who we are. And I think that what this book does, it opens up with the preamble of a departure, uh, an abandonment of my uh, birthplace, uh, trying to find uh, a new spot, a new place in America, and finding in America the most important thing in life. My wife, love. Love, I think, will save us all from everything. If you don't have it now, don't despair. God has interesting ways of combining. I mean, my wife by mistake, by the way. <laughs> and I ended up on television by mistake. That was not the business I was supposed to be in. Uh, so trust the fact that the universe at times has plans for you. Do not let yourself swim uh, in the waters of despair. They do no good for you. They just put you in a bad mood, and that's it. If despair is what comes, everybody can be despaired. It's not being desperate to still be able to look outside the lake of despair and believe that on the other side there is something awaiting for you and do whatever you can to restore your smile, your happiness, your joy and I don't know how much you listen to me or not on this matter but I trust me when I say this a plate of pasta resolves everything and I got plenty of pastas in this book there is a recipe that I have for risotto alla milanese which is a, a shrimp with saffron uh, sorry, uh, rice with sh uh, saffron, which also has shrimp. Risotto alle minarese con i gamberi. Mamma mia, una cosa incredibile. Guardate, quando queste cose si prendono mette in questa maniera, si capito. But now I forgot I'm speaking Italian instead of speaking English. This is happening to me more and more. Uh, one of the things since I hit uh, 65 as my age, I start to remember the stories of my childhood. They pop into my head. Characters who I've not thought of for so long. Moments that I've not thought for so long that become so real. I remember the first time that my father uh, uh, taught me how to grill shrimp. This one I have to tell you, this is not in the book, so don't buy the book because of the story, but there are great stories like this. Uh, we lived uh, in, uh, in a condominium building, a uh, fairly new one in the city of Palermo, uh, rather a luxury because it did have air conditioning that at that time did not exist uh, just about anywhere in the city. And if you have ever been in Sicily in summer, you know that it's horrible to live there with no air conditioning. Uh, my father had bought uh, uh, hibachi. Hibachi is a Japanese style small grill with charcoal and he had uh, gone in the morning early uh, at the harbor and he had come back with some fresh branzino. Uh, branzino is a type of fish, sea bass is the one that compares to it. And uh, it was, that was the day, I was uh, six or seven years old, maybe no more than that, that my father decided to teach me how to cook uh, the branzino and to make uh, vini sauce. Uh, vini sauce, by the way, is on my, uh, vini's marinade is on my uh, uh, website. Uh, the recipe for it is made with tomatoes, garlic, rosemary, salt, pepper, and then you marinate either the fish or the meat into it, and then you grill it. And the grilling, uh, while you do it, you want to baste both either the fish or the meat. And what my father used to do is to tie up together uh, six, seven peas of a rosemary branch, making a branch by itself, that he would whisk in the wet and then splash over the protein as he cooked it. I thought my father was a genius. I love the smell and the aroma of the fish. I love the taste, but I don't mean brought it to the table. But more than that, I felt so important, so special to have been tasked by my dad with the responsibility of cooking uh, this fish for the family. Uh, these stories are the stories that define us as for who we are in the present that we live in and for the future we'll be able to acquire for ourselves. Uh, you know this right now that the clock is telling me that I've been talking incessantly for 53 minutes and 46 seconds. I wonder if I said meaningful things if I was just talking to myself, but Curtis Namanni, come stai? Michael Scharf, come stai? Jackie William, come stai? Angela Ferris, Viking Graham. Ah, you guys are really, really making my day. I have been so nervous that I don't think I slept all the well. I've been 
pacing up and down. I've not talked to my public in so long that even though we're doing it via computer with Facebook, I still feel this to be an exclusive and special moment. If you think that you're excited to see me, allow me to say this. I am so excited that so many of you have spent this time. If I could ask you a favor, I would simply say this. For those of you who have bought my book, please tell your friends about it. For those of you who have received a sample copy of my book and you like it, please share with your friends. They don't have to buy anything. I don't care. There's 34 pages you know, full of recipes and stories that they can use anytime they want. But I would like for this book to end up in the hands of as many people as possible, especially people who are in, in need of a smile. Because a smile that you get on your face and translates to your soul is the greatest act of love there is. Today is Wednesday. Tomorrow will be Thursday. And uh, one of the things that I want you to remember is that Life is much better when you smile. Even if adversity is meeting with you, smile. Let yourself recognize the moment where joy fills your heart and then deal with what you gotta deal with. After all, you didn't get this far because you're a dummy. You understand that, right? So we're allowed to make some mistakes along the way. Let me just say something great. Uh, we only have, uh, oh my gosh, this is my team telling me these books are selling like hotcakes and I got more messages that I can read. Look, I don't care about that. If you guys don't buy these books now, don't worry about it. They're telling me that we almost sold out the last, the last few books that we had left. Uh, if you don't get the books on the shipment that we got coming in August, you will be part of the next shipment that will arrive later in September or early October. The book is great and it will give me great joy to know that you keep this book for the rest of your life. I would not like to see this book on eBay or on Amazon on the used market because then it would mean that that book did not connect and that would make me sad and that would make me uh, think that I should do a better job at it. I created this book so that you will hold them the same way I held my cat, close to your heart, <laughs> the same way you hold your children. I, I want for my book to do that and it doesn't matter what I want. Uh, it only happens if you feel that that's what happens and if you feel that that's what happens even if it's just one person, then my book is a success. And I would be very happy with that. Thank you for taking so much time with me. Thank you for listening to me so patiently. Thank you for all of you. I'm getting tons of messages here from my people telling me that so many people are buying the books. Uh, when it arrives, take a moment. Get yourself a drink, glass of water, glass of wine, whatever it is that you like to drink. Pepsi, Coke, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper used to be my favorite in the old days. Sit on a comfortable chair, pick a story, and read it out and enjoy the smile. You know what? You deserve to smile. Like my wife and I said on the title of our book by Nick and Nancy Stellino, from our hearts to your kitchen, arrivederci e grazie. I love you all. We'll be back soon, next time. Until then, I want to get messages from those of you that get the books when you get them. As soon as you read them, please send me a note. Let me know how you liked it. It's important to me. It's extremely important. I wish to God that I am not a man who's just in love with the image he sees in the mirror. I would like to know that all of these things that I see, that I say, that I narrate, find a connection with you. And if they do, <laughs> to me, that would be so much better than winning the lotto. From my heart to your kitchen. Arrivederci a tutti. Ciao.